So the next step is to drill and then ream the holes that the indicator and the hard stop are going to mount through. So I've got a spot drill in place here, it's all lined up for the first hole. Um, got my reamer and drill set out, make sure I have the right size set out just so I don't screw this up. And it do, so should just be able to go to town. Try power feed here. There you go, you can hear it. Got it in. It's got a good piston fit. Slides down, it's actually not super tight, but plenty. So, on to the next one. I've repositioned the wear piece, I've got it all aligned, so now I'm gonna drill and tap the two holes for the set screws. Since these are so small, I'm gonna try it using uh, one pass. Should be fine. I can get the drill bit in the chuck. That's one down, one to go. I drilled the second hole off camera because it's not really that entertaining. Um, I repositioned everything, got a tack guide in, so now it's time to tap these holes. It's just some tack magic in a little hypodermic bottle. I kind of like it versus having like a big old school, like just a regular bottle that ships in. This lets me get it right up close like this. Run it down next to the taps if I, if I want to. Just using this little um, set screw to make sure I got the threads all the way down through because this is a not a bottoming tap, it's just a regular tap. It goes all the way down through, so that one's good. So
So I've got the workpiece repositioned and I've got a six flute finishing mill in the spindle. And then down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you can see a dial indicator on a mag base. And I'm going to take a, I'm going to reposition the camera and then I'll show you why I have it set up this way. So I've got the camera positioned in a way that hopefully this is easy for you guys to all see. Since my machine doesn't have a DRO and I've got a mill a slot that's got to be a decently accurate width, this is what I came up with. So right now it's at zero to mill one side of the slot. And I can, if I back out to just back to three thousands, that would mill the other side of the slot given taking into account the width of the cutter. So basically what I can do is I can start milling, go down to depth, you know, leave five on each side, so like leave five there, go back here, leave five there, get right down to depth, and then go back to make my finishing cuts, and just take a few thousandths off each time, then I should have a nice accurate slot to depth that I can test against. Last night I finished milling the slot for the V-Way, wasn't anything special, it was kind of time consuming, and I, if I had to do it again, I think I would just turn the vise around so I could use power feed. But as you can see here, the slot's in place. I, you can kind of see here there's a bunch of steps. That's just clear it so I could um, measure the depth of the, the slot. And if you haven't done that before, you just take a round. In this case, this is a half inch drill blank. And then you just measure across like this. And then doing a little math, you can figure out how deep the slot is and whether you're to, to spec or not. So the next thing I need to do is clean up a little bit, uh, put the drill chuck back in, and then I'm going to be going to drill and then ream the two holes I need for the rare earth magnets. I've validated that the process I used to drill the first hole works. I didn't punch through the bottom of the part, which is always nice, so I've just got to go through and make the second hole. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing to work with these close tolerances that I have. Which close is a relative term. I just have to be careful with the drill bit. I don't punch out the top of the part. spot drill. And then this is an interesting part here. I don't have a lot of space between the bottom of this hole and what will be the top of the part. So what I've done is you just chuck up the drill bit. Make sure there's no chips or anything laying down here. Take a piece of material, in this case this is just a, a 6 inch flex rule, so it's a 64th of an inch thick. Run the drill bit down till you just touch zero of the DRO and the quill. Run it back down. Going to use the fine feet on the quill to zero out the tip, so basically I'm compensating for the thickness of the ruler. Re-zero the quill, and I'm ready to drill. Just to drill down to three quarters of an inch. Pilot holes taken care of. Gotta go through now and drill the hole large enough for the reamer. And then it's the same process. Chuck up. Oh, I hope I don't drop stuff on the floor. Make sure you got no chips down here. Lay your ruler in place. Run the quill down till you touch. Zero the DRO, run back down, 
engage the, there we go, engage the fine feed. Run down to what would be for zero. There we go. Now zeroed. So, time to drill another hole. Chips, and this is the there we go. That's taken care of. So the last step, well, second to last step, I guess. I've got to raise the head so I can get the reamer in underneath the chuck. Watch my sorry about my hand. Good enough. Slow the head down here. just to put a little chamfer. I think I'm going to use the firing piece for this just because I want to. I'm going to try and get it close to the other one. It's kind of hard to see down in the slot here, so... They both look pretty close, so now I just gotta test it. Blow this out. Got the magnet here on the end of the spotting drill, so hopefully this should just. Yeah, goes down in. Tight fit, like I want it. Now well, I can hopefully just 
Okay, now I gotta get it out. Step to finish off the V-way middling is to make a little flat spot here, just to, one, so it's not razor sharp like that, and then two, so it can actually clear the bottom of the V-way on the inside, so. I've gone and put a little blue Sharpie in here and I'm just gonna go over until I touch, and then I'll feed in appropriately. It's not a precise measurement by any means, even if it's off by 10 thousandths, it would probably be fine. So. Okay, that's it. I'll clean this up and I'll take it over to the lathe and we'll see if it fits. So here it is. I've got it mounted up on the lathe. I've got two magnets in the bores right now. They're not Loctited in, but they're in there. So, I mean, it moves around a little bit and you can see the magnets just pull out. But I think these two magnets will be, I think they'll be pretty good. I think they'll produce enough force, maybe even a little too much. But they're gonna hold it in place and then that big thumb screw underneath will lock it down.